Today we're going to look at taking off the rotors, doing a brake job on a 99 Suburban 2500, in other words, three quarter ton. Uh, these vehicles are a lot heavier and the brakes don't come apart like most of them. Uh, there's already some videos out there on how to take the uh, hub assembly apart because the front brakes on a Suburban, and if you own one, you're probably sitting there question, thinking, how in the world do I get these brakes apart? I'll get that rotor off. Well, in this case right here, you see this rotor's pretty much had it. It's all nice and grooved up. And I've already started taking it apart. So the basics are surely if you, if you don't know how to take the lug, nut, or the lug nuts off and the wheel off, then you don't need to be doing a brake job. But I've already taken the wheel off. I went ahead, well, before I took the wheel off, I went ahead and took this uh, uh, CV shaft nut off. Because it's usually about 100 and, I think it's 180 to 200 foot pounds. I have to look up the specs. But... Um, it's pretty heavy. I mean, if you got a good impact gun, you can do it. But if not, you can fit something on the ground. Just take the center cap off the wheel and put that on there and break it free. I went ahead and disconnected the uh, tie rod in. And let's see. To do the tie rod in, there's a lot. Just a tip. A lot of people will show you to put a nut on top of the threads of the tie rod and beat it down, uh, or put a spreader that goes in between the two which can tear up this boot and I just changed out the suspension so or the steering linkage on this thing so I didn't want to tear up the boot but the trick is is take a hammer like a two to five pound hammer and hit it hit this uh, spindle or the tie rod just hit it quite a few times maybe about four or five times good hard licks and what it does it just slightly just I mean ever slightly out around that hole just, just for a moment and that just falls right out and that's all there is to it. You don't have to have and that saves the boot and then when you go bolt it back it's just as tight as it ever was. Uh, now to get this apart you know you take that nut off obviously this thing doesn't come off you're gonna have to knock these studs out and I'll show you. And just as a tip uh, I didn't let the caliper because that caliper is a heavy one I didn't let it dangle by the brake hose I just set it up on top of the control arm. Um, sometimes it might, if you're really worried about it it might be a good idea to um, uh, put some tie straps on it. Those right there are the uh, caliper pin bolts, the slide bolts. They take a 3 8 hex bit. This is for a ratchet. I just that's all I use. I didn't use even impact guns just to, or any air gun or anything. I just use a ratchet and they unscrewed. They go on the back side. You'll see it. Hopefully you know the basics of a brake job. The reason why I'm doing this video more is just to show you the complication of getting these rotors off. But I set the caliper up to, on top of the control arm. If you don't think you can get it stable, then bungee cord it or uh, use a mechanics wire. But you've got this wire that runs from the uh, uh, anti-lock brake system that's connected into that hub. And you have to disconnect it before you can pull all this stuff off. So look for these little clips like that. I've already pulled them from here. I pulled it out of this one right here. It doesn't go any very far. I'm, hopefully I can show you this here. Right there is the connector. You just kind of put your finger or your thumb. I get this camera in a right angle. It's just a clip. You can just push with a kind of spread open your thumb that's a catch on that other half of it. Why they had to put it under all this, I don't know, but that's what it looks like. This is supposed to have a little barb on it. And it's broke off right there in the frame. I'll have to pull that out. But your new one will come with a, if you get a new one. It'll come with that notch, you'll have to try to slide it back in that little slot there. And these clips are kind of tight. So what I've been doing is just kind of putting a screwdriver up under the wire and kind of getting it started to pull out of there. So now it's free. You'll want to uh, fish it around the uh, brake line. And now it's ready to pull off. 
Well, the reason why too that I, I forgot maybe I didn't mention. The reason why I took this uh, tie rod end off is that way I can just twist this thing back and forth to get to those bolts, and they just go. in the back right there straight through into the hub so and that allows me the flexibility and plus you have to have the caliper off so if you got your spindle free and the caliper off you can get to all four bolts with the full bar and a socket and this the brakes on this thing we're nervous out messed up I checked the piston in the caliper and it goes in and out okay but these right here Let's see if I can get a good angle on it. See that shiny, shiny dowel right there? That's a, that's a slide, and it slides. That allows the caliper to slide on the roll on the rotor, and adjust itself when you're not using the brake. When they start sticking, it causes the uh, pads to end up actually doing this eating thing. So, I've already disassembled the other side. And this is what it looks like disassembled. Now, how I did that, let's see if I can get. You can obviously see this is just a dust shield. And it'll. But you can obviously see there's four holes. So the nuts, or rather the bolts, the head of the bolts, are on the back side. Let me see if I can get this camera around right here. And there's two on the back side too. They are 15 millimeter heads, unless somebody's changed them out, but they're 15 millimeter heads. They torque around 130, 140 foot pounds. Uh, and usually if it hasn't been ever been apart, they're tight. What I did is I, I got the some lubricating oil up in behind the rotor and sprayed up here where the bolts go, and it actually got to the threads and it made it loose it made it loosen up enough to where I could break it free. But you have to use a pull bar on it and use it a little short extension to get past. Because you, if you try to put a bar at least in a half inch drive, if you try to put a bar and a socket on it, it'll get into the CV shaft. So if you put an extension, it'll come out past that just a little bit and then you can turn it. Um, of course, if you've got a good impact gun, you can get some swivels on it or a good angle on it, you can uh, pop it free. But that's how that comes apart. Here it is apart, and what I had to do, and I'll, I'm gonna, when I get to the other side, I'm gonna uh, demonstrate. But I had to knock all the uh, eight studs out, and that separates the rotor and the uh, hub assembly. And this is a hub bearing assembly. And just a rule of thumb, when you take it apart, especially if the vehicle's got over 100,000 miles on it or something, go ahead and change out the hub bearing. They're not that expensive. Well, it depends on where you get them from. I think local stores, uh, they charge $100 a hub, something like that, but you can get them online for almost that much for a set. If you don't have a brass hammer, kind of tap this in with them. Make sure the nuts on a little bit. It'll only go so far, and then you start seeing it spring. That's just to make sure it's loose out of the threads. And when you go back together with it, make sure that the, your splash shield's like that. In other words, it's got to be open for the caliper to squeeze the rotor. That's all there is to pulling it off after you get those bolts out. This is the new hub assembly, and these are the bolts that's just sticking up there. Those are the bolts that go through the spindle in the hub assembly. And I've already cleaned up the threads, chased the threads, and wire brushed it. These are 14 by 150, and you'll find that no parts store carries a 14 by 150 die. And that's the difference too. I'll bring that up. The die is the part that is the big, looks like a nut that chases these threads and cleans the threads up or cuts new threads. A tap is what goes inside of a hole. But of course these are new, so I don't need to. But these were really bad, so when I went to try to screw these into the new one, it went about like one or two threads and it locked up and stopped. Now they're clean and 
goes. I wire brushed all the uh, studs and chased the threads on those and same with the lug nuts. And a lot of times these lug nuts get messed up because if you're going to get tires you got a lot of uh, these tire shops that are in a big hurry. So what they do is they'll stick the lug nut inside the socket on the impact gun and they're just really good and they just start zooming and getting it on there. Well, sometimes when it doesn't quite uh, line up right, it kind of boogers the threads. And this is already rough. It went in so far and now it's kind of got a rough feeling to it. So this is just, I'm not messing the threads up, I'm just cleaning them out. I mean, obviously, I can do it with one hand. And that's all it should be like. So you clean all these up that way when you go to put it back on, you want to first put your lug nuts on, you know, and run them up so far with your fingers to make sure that they're on the threads good and uh, lining up halfway decent before you start running an impact gun or really torquing them down with a, a bar. Okay, if you didn't get new studs with your uh, new hub, you're going to have to reuse these studs here. Now, there's some videos that shows people just bang them, and you can, but uh, if you're trying to save the threads, it's better to hold with one hammer blunt and then do that. That way, you run, run less of a chance of hitting an angle and beating the thread wrong and then having to clean the thread up and replace the stud. Now we want to want to uh, clean these up. And if you're reusing the hub assembly, you can just, uh, just kind of tap it. You see it's opening up the gap in there. And then you just reuse the hub assembly. Okay, the next thing you want to do before you go back together is you want to clean the rust and the gum out of this thing. This is also a seal that comes in from the back side. You kind of want to inspect it and you can do that by just kind of pushing that back and looking at it, which I already have and this one's still good. So uh, it's more to keep the water out of from trying to get in inside here and get all this rusted together because uh, the hub bearing is pretty much sealed. But I just take a piece of this maybe I think 220 or 320 emery cloth that fit I just take a wire brush be brass or steel either one it, this one looks pretty clean but I just do it just to ensure there's no uh, debris inside those splines And what I do, save a bunch of trouble when you go to stick that on since you can't see nothing anyways. Just have it sitting there ready. Now, just put a little Loctite on the threads. It doesn't require a lot. Now we're going to put the rotor over that hub. What you're going to want to do Feed that wire through it. Look for the square shape hole in that. Just cock it. It's there. And then you'll line up the uh, holes for the stud. And of course, we're going to set this up on a block of wood because uh, it'll bang into the ground. Start off just by sticking these through the holes. Wiggle your wood around to, or whatever you're blocking it with to get the room for the holes to go through.
you can look at the uh, you have to get the right angle on the hand with the camera but you can see if it's all the way flush and like I said I'm gonna go over each one with a, a nut on the outside and I'll show how to do that just to make sure it's all the way in another thing is whenever you buy new rotors they always have a coating on them to protect them from rust I mean you could just uh, let the brakes wear it off but it kind of puts a gummy substance on the pads and burns and smells so Here's a little brake cleaner. And wipe it off. That way you have a nice fresh metal seat against those new pads. Now I'm ready to put this on. And remember the um, sensor wire for the any lock brake. It points in the upward position. Otherwise it could come out in the wrong place and get messed up or it just won't be long enough. And there is no real trick to this other than turning and get the splines caught on the hub. Just got to wiggle until you get the, until it goes in, and then hopefully your bolts will start threading. And this one did. Okay, an important note here. I showed you the wire routing, but ensure that your uh, ABS wire comes behind the dust shield. There's a slot in it. You'll see it. So you may want to line it up before. I mean. I got lucky and they just kind of fell in the slot. They kind of do when they're pointing straight up. But there's a slot in this dust shield. Just make sure the wire comes through it and doesn't come between your rotor and your shield. Make sure it's behind it. Okay, as I was talking about earlier, to ensure that these have, uh, studs have all the way through, you know, even though we beat them, and you could probably measure them to make sure they're all right. And I can see what's sticking through, but I always to ensure it before I tighten down the wheels I get a nut that's bigger than the uh, stud run the lug nuts up there by hand to it now I use an impact gun you can get an electric one or a battery operated one but uh I go until the gun can't go no more on to the next one and I looked up this torque specs and I was really surprised I thought it was 110 but the, these lug these studs when you tighten the wheel down are 140 I might only go 135 because you can start smashing the wheel but I'll definitely check but the spec is 140 so that's how you ensure the studs are pulled through or solid seated so I just wanted to show you that real quick <laughs> 